How are you doing today? Minaguru. How are you doing today? Minaguru. I know it's cold, but the people don't have to be cold. <laughs> I was in uh, Colombia a few weeks ago. Olin pari viikkoa sitten Kolumbiassa. And uh, whatever you say, people get excited. Mitä vaan sanot siellä, niin ihmiset innostuu. And sometimes they get excited and they don't even know what you say. <laughs> so maybe it's better to respond only when you understand what the preacher is saying. <laughs> it's good to be at this third stirring meeting, the third one. You can see those who've been to the two first ones. <laughs> you can see the blessing on their face. <laughs> those who've been to only two, the blessing is not fully there yet. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I just want to thank uh, yeah, Pastor Chima and his wife for this invitation. <laughs> with you for these three days. And I want to thank him for choosing the best two translators in <laughs> Did you translate that? Yes. <laughs> Who would have thought that uh, 11 years ago when we met in Cambodia, Kuka olisi uskonut, että silloin kun tavattiin 11 vuotta sitten Kambodžassa, that, uh, we would meet again in Helsinki, Finland. Että tapaisimme Suomessa, Helsingissä. Uh, and I've met a few people who have been to Cambodia these last few days. Olen tavannut täällä muutamia ihmisiä, jotka ovat käyneet Kambodžassa. Uh, if you look over there, you can see the glow of Cambodia. Näen tällaisen Kambodžan hehkutien Tarun came to Cambodia about six, seven years ago. Tarun came to Cambodia six, Almost ten years ago. Yeah, ten years ago. He looks so young. Now he's looking And uh, she helped us out in the slums of Phnom Penh. Yeah, he came to see us in the slums. There are more than four hundred slums in Cambodia's capital city. And we just look back, I look back after 18 years of working in Cambodia, I just bless God for those lives who have crossed to a better life. I've seen lives change in the slums. I've seen lives change in the places where you would never think anything could happen. Places where even the government would put a cross and say no hope over there. The social services would say no hope in there. God says, I'll go inside. <laughs> and I will transform the community. <laughs> Actually, about three weeks ago, I was with a friend and we drove all the way to the north of Cambodia. <laughs> to the province of Previhi or PV. <laughs> P and V. PV. That's right. <laughs> It's almost on the Laos border, on the north of Cambodia. And this was not planned when we arrived to meet this missionary in PV. When we met him, we met a Cambodian pastor. And he says, every Saturday morning I go to the prison of PV. Hän sanoi, että joka lauantai menen vankilaan siellä Piviissä. And I said, can I come with you? Ja pyysin, voiko tulla mukaan? We went to one of the most oppressed places I have ever been in my life. Menin sellaiseen paikkaan, joka oli yksi, yksi um, jossa ihmiset on todella, todella niin kuin ahdinkoissa. Two big doors uh, at the entrance of the prison. Tosi suuret ovet oli siellä meitä vastassa. About 300 prisoners. 
They were so excited to see an outside face. He oli niin riemuissaan, että näkee jonkun ulkopuolisen ihmisen kasvot siellä. The prisoners, some are dressed in blue, some are dressed in orange. Eli he oli pukeutuneet siniseen, jotkut oranssiin. So I said to the Cambodian pastor, why two colors? Kysyin täältä pastorilta, miksi nämä kaksi väriä? He said, the blue people are those who have already heard their sentence. Siniseen pukeutuneet vangit ovat jo kuulleet heidän tuomionsa. They know already how many years they will have to spend in PV prison. Eli he tietävät, kuinka monta vuotta on edessä siellä vankilassa. And I said, what about the orange ones? Entä sitten oranssiin pukeutuneet? He said, they're still waiting. No he vielä odottavat. There was one Vietnamese prisoner in the PV prison. Siellä oli myös yksi vietnamilainen vanki. He was dressed in orange. Hän oli pukeutunut oranssiin. He's been in the prison for 11 years. Hän oli ollut siellä jo 11 vuotta. 11 years of waiting for the sentence. 11 vuotta odottanut, mikä hänen tuomio on? That is called mental torture. Sitä kutsutaan henkiseksi kidutukseksi. But he was beaming with the love of Jesus. Mutta hän aivan hehkui Jeesuksen rakkautta. And then we walked into that chapel and it was flooded with prisoners. Ja kun menimme sinne vankilan kappeliin, se oli täynnä vankeja. My friend from England preached the gospel. Englantilainen ystäväni saarnasi siellä. And then he handed the baton over to me and I made an appeal to give whoever wanted to give their lives to Jesus. Ja hän antoi sen viestikapulan minulle ja kysyin, kuka haluaa jättää elämänsä Jeesuksen käsiin. And when I looked at the congregation of about 100 prisoners, kun katsoin sitä noin sadan vangin seurakuntaa, even though they are locked up in one of the worst places you can walk in in your, in your life, vaikka he on jumissa siellä yhdessä maailman kauheimmista paikoista, You could see the presence of Jesus on their faces. I've met some I've met some very sad Christian in the open. <laughs> I've met some very happy Christians inside a jail. Wherever you go, you meet God's people. Kaikkialla se voi tavata Jumalan ihmisiä. And uh, since I've been here, I just feel at home. Ja täällä musta tuntuu, että mä oon kotona. So I might take over your church. <laughs> <laughs> What I've loved here is the time of worship. Eli täällä erityisesti rakastan tätä ylistyksen hetkeä. I never knew a FIFA referee could lead the worship so well. <laughs> Et tiedä, että FIFA on tuo valmi. Voi ylistää niin hyvin. We sang early on, my sin is great, his love is greater. In the prison of PV, this makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Your sin will never be greater than his love. All the sins in the world combined together will never match the love of God. <laughs> I've met some people who have done some horrible things in Cambodia. Last year I went to this uh, pastor's conference in the north of Cambodia. And I met this pastor of about 60 years old. When you meet him, you would never know about his past. He led the service. Hän johti kokousta. Great time of worship. Ihanaa ylistyksen hetki. And then there was a break time between two meetings. Sitten oli väliaika kahden kokouksen välissä. So a missionary friend says, do you know the past of this pastor? Joten ystäväni, ystävät siellä kysyivät, tiedätkö tämän pastorin taustasta? He says, I don't know, it's not written on his head. Hän sanoi, en tiedä, ei ole kirjoitettu hänen otsaansa. He said, this man was one of the fighters with the Khmer Rouge 40 years ago in Cambodia. Ja kuulin, että tämä mies taisteli äh, siellä äh, puna, puna Khmer joukoissa 40 vuotta sitten. The Khmer Rouge or the Red Khmer were the communists who took over the country. Silloin kommunistit otti koko maan valtaansa. And his missionary said, do you know what he had to do as a soldier to prove that he was a great soldier? Ja muuten kysyttiin, tiedätkö mitä hänen piti tehdä osoittaakseen, että hän on hyvä sotilas? He would take a knife and rip the stomach alive of the enemy soldier. He would put his hand inside the chest. Pull the heart out. And hold it up. 
Every soldier who did that was a real soldier. And I look at this pastor who's leading the communion, bread and wine. And then he leads us in singing amazing grace in the Cambodian language. <laughs> you know, when you and I sing amazing grace, we don't even think of the words. <laughs> For this Cambodian pastor, it means a lot. Amazing grace that saved a rotten, a wretch like me. I was once lost, but now I'm found. I was a Khmer Rouge leader, now I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you think your sin is great, think of this man. If he can receive the amazing grace of God, you can. If the grace of God can touch a man who did so much harm to people, the grace of God can touch you too today. Your sin is great, his love is greater. The picture I have in mind is, when I was a little boy, I used to play with magnets. And magnets sometimes, they meet each other. When you turn them the other way, one chases the other. <laughs> we didn't have many toys and we had no television when I was a boy. So I played with everything I could find. <laughs> and I was trying to get the magnet number one to catch magnet number two. <laughs> It never worked. <laughs> and I said, now I'm going to do it. I'm going to put all my strength and catch magnet number two. <laughs> and I gave up. I want to tell you, give up. <laughs> because your sin will be never greater than the love of God. The grace of God will run faster than your sin. Jumalan rakkaus ja armo on paljon nopeampi kuin sun And some people, even in church, want the two to meet each other. Ja kirkossa ihmiset odottaa, että nämä kaksi kohtaa toisensa. Sin will always run behind. Mutta synti juoksee aina sieltä perässä. Sin will never win. Se ei voita ikinä. Sin juoksua. will always be number two. Se jää aina kakkoseksi. The grace of God will always be number one. Jumalan armo on aina ykköspaikalla. Whatever you do, grace will win. Mitä sä teet, niin Jumalan armo voittaa. The love of God is always greater than your sin. So whatever is your past, if it's as bad as pulling your heart out of someone's chest, God can give you grace and forgive you. Amen? Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. There's about four people who haven't said amen. 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 That's better. I thought I was in Colombia there. Amen. How many of you have started to run? There's quite a few folks here from, from Africa, I guess. The Africans are always the best runners in the world. You know, you, you have a, a marathon in the Olympic Games. You have the Ethiopians. You have those from Kenya. And then you have this guy from Poland. You feel like telling the guys from Poland, don't run the race. <laughs> Kenya is there and Ethiopia is there, they will ring. <laughs> and you have this French guy who thinks he's going to win. <laughs> the main thing is to run. <laughs> Some people will run faster, some people will run slower. The main thing is to run. Even if you arrive the last one in the race, the main thing is to run. 
Vaikka tulisi viimeisenä maaliin, niin pääsiät juokset. You know, in the year 2000, when I was in Cambodia, vuonna 2000, kun olin Kambodžassa, I went for a swim. Menin uimaan. I swim every day. Uin siellä joka päivä. And I was in this really nice swimming pool in Phnom Penh. Olin ihan mukavassa uimaaltaassa. There was only two of us in the pool. Ja vaan kaksi ihmistä oli uimassa. This guy who thinks he can swim. Tämä tyyppi, joka luulee osaavansa uida. And then this Cambodian guy who knew how to swim. Kambodžalainen, joka... He knew how to swim. Joka todella tiesi, miten uidaan. And then I stopped because he was going so fast. En mä pysähdy, kun hän vaan suihkatteli ohi siellä. So I thought, is he on drugs? Ajattelin, onko hän ihan huumeissa? When he finished swimming, I went over to him. Ja sitten kun hän lopetti, menin hänen luokseen. I said, my goodness, you are an amazing swimmer. Hyvä tavata, sä oot ihan super uimari. I have never seen anyone in Cambodia swim as fast as him. En ole ikinä kenenkään Kambodžassa nähnyt uivan niin kovaa. He says, well, I'm part of the Olympic team. Hän sanoi, että on olympialaisen tiimiin. And he said, we just came back from the Sydney Olympic Games 2000. Tulimme juuri Sydney olympialaisista takaisin. I said, oh, then I have a question for you. No sitten mulla on sulle kysymys. I said, the other day I saw the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games in Sydney. Eli näin sen Sydney olympialaisten avajaisseremonian televisiosta. And I said, I was looking forward to see the Cambodian flag with the name Cambodia. Ja odotin, että näkisin siellä Kambodjan lipun, jossa lukisi Kambodja. So I saw all the countries with A. Ja seurasin kaikkia maita. All the countries with B. Alla alkavat, B alla alkavat. Then I was looking forward to C. Sitten odotin, että C alla alkavat maat. I saw Cameroon. Cameroon oli se. I saw Canada. Canada oli. And then I saw Denmark. I said, where was Cambodia? Missä oli Kambodja? I said, you were part of the Olympic team. Where was Cambodia? Sehän oli tuossa tiimiä. Missä te oikein olitte? He says, oh, don't ask me, don't ask me. Älä kysy multa, hän sanoi. We missed the plane in Malaysia. And we arrived too late for the opening ceremony. He said we were four in the team. Two runners and two swimmers. He said the runner ran the marathon. Now the marathon is the last competition on the last day of the Olympic Games. Actually, the marathon is on the same day as the closing ceremony. He told me the Cambodian guy arrived last for the last competition on the last day. And actually he get he got very famous. Because he was the last one. But the whole stadium in Sydney, Australia gave him a great innovation. Because he finished the race. And that's the main thing. Finish the race. Don't let anyone stop you from finishing the race. I heard that in ancient Greece, those who ran the marathon, 42 kilometers, they were at the starting point of the marathon, and they are holding a torch in their hands. The torch is lit. There is a flame in the torch. And then they went running across ancient Greece. You won not only if you crossed the line, the finishing line. You won if your torch was still lit on the finishing line. Make sure your torch is still lit. Varmista, että sinun soihtu palaa. It's not just about running, it's running with the Holy Spirit. Ei ole kysy vain juoksemisesta, vaan juoksemisesta pyhän hengen kanssa. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Onko sinulla pyhä henki? Because the Holy Spirit will get you to the finishing line. Koska pyhä henki, se on se, mikä saa sinut sinne maaliin. I see some Christians who are running all over the place. Näen monia kristittyjä, jotka juoksee sinne tänne. They go to this conference. They go to this mission trip. They hear a voice from God. 
Uh, and then they say, hmm, this is not the voice of God, they hear another voice. <laughs> Be focused. Run on your track. Hold the lap up and high. And make sure you cross the finishing line one day with your light on. Amen. 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 I love this saying from Reinhard Bonke, an evangelist from Germany who worked mainly in Africa. He says, some people at every conference get a new calling from God. You don't need another calling from God. You need to go to the shopping mall, <laughs> buy yourself a suitcase and get going. <laughs> Amen. 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 So don't just hold your torch on the starting line. Some people spend their time with the torch. <laughs> and they want, they want the pastor to bless the torch. <laughs> so the pastor doesn't pray really well, so they go to another conference. <laughs> and they look for another pastor. <laughs> Please put your hand on my torch. <laughs> and they say, no, I need the, the wife of the pastor. <laughs> And they're holding to their torch. <laughs> One year. <laughs> Five years. <laughs> and then they're getting old. <laughs> they need a stick and a torch. <laughs> <laughs> God says, get going! <laughs> Run! <laughs> Run with my spirit! <laughs> you already have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the day you gave your life to Jesus, His Holy Spirit filled you. <laughs> so get going! <laughs> get going! In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's just uh, open our Bibles and then we're going to pray for God to bless the next uh, 20, 25 minutes together. <laughs> There's just a few copies left, so don't fight over the book. <laughs> and uh, this is made by uh, young guys from the province of PV, Previ here. So this is real Cambodian room. Okay, it's not IKEA from Sweden. <laughs> Amen. Let's open the Bible and then we're going to pray. Hebrews, let's go back to the verse we read yesterday night. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12 and the very first verse. Might be a good idea of a preacher to find it. <laughs> it does help, it does help. I've seen pastors sometimes who cannot find some books in the Bible. They're looking for Haggai, Haggai, Haggai. <laughs> and then they go to the first page and look at it. <laughs> the main thing is to find the passage. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run, run with endurance the race God has set before us. Kun siis ympärillämme on todistajia kokonainen pilvi, Kankaamme pois kaikki, mikä painaa, ja synti, joka niin helposti kietoutuu meihin. Amen. Juoskaamme sinnikkäästi loppuun se kilpailu, joka on edessämme. Look what we're going to do. I could be doing the praying. What about if we just do something that is probably not 
the usual thing to do, yeah? Rukoillaanko he vähän erilaisella tavalla nyt? Just uh, hold the hand of your neighbor. Pidä, ota naapuri kädestä kiinni. And just say, Lord, I pray that my brother, my sister will be listening for the next 20 minutes. Minä rukoilen, että sun sisäväsi tai veljesi pystyy kuuntelemaan ja keskittymään seuraavan puoli tuntia. Even if the king of Norway walks in the room, don't let it look. Vaikka Norjan kuningas astuisi sisään. Concentrate. Okay, I've gone 13,000 kilometers to be here today. So don't let any distraction take over. This message could change your life. God wants to break the nest. So you can fly today. In Jesus' name. So you pray two minutes with your neighbor for God's blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your voice and pray for him. Pray for her. Thank you, Jesus. Crowd of witnesses. If you look around, you see a huge crowd of witnesses. The witnesses are found in chapter 11 of Hebrews. And last night we went through the list of those heroes of the cross who ran for Jesus. Eli eilen käytiin läpi näitä Jumalan sankareita, jotka on juossut tätä juoksua Jeesuksen And when they finished their race, they handed the baton to the next one. Ja kun he pääsivät juoksunsa loppuun, he luovutti viesti kapulan eteenpäin. And the next one ran his race or her race for Jesus. Ja seuraava lähti juoksemaan omaa juoksuaan. And the baton has been going from one witness to another witness. Ja viesti kapula on siirtynyt todistajilta toiselle. All through the Bible. When you got to the last page of the Bible, the early church Christians pick up the baton and run. Jesus had gone back to the Father already, but the Holy Spirit was still there. The torch was lit. And through the darkness of the early church period, they still ran for Jesus. Ja vaikka oli pimeitä aikoja silloin alkukirkon päivinä, niin he silti juoksi Jeesukselle. 500 years ago a man by the name of Martin Luther. 500 vuotta sitten Martin Luther. He picked up the baton. Hän nosti viesti kapulan. And he says the Bible is the only authority. Ja hän sanoi että ainoa autoriteetti on Raamattu. Grace is the only way to enter into the presence of God. Ja armosta vain pelastutaan. And he started to run. Hän aloitti juoksun. When you start running, you make a lot of enemies. Not everybody will cheer you when you run for Jesus. And he passed on the baton to the next one. In 2017, the baton is right here. You can look at it and say, wow, what a, what a long journey all the way from the first person who took the baton. Voit ihailla sitä kapulaa ja sen matkaa sieltä alkuajoista tänne. The button has your name on it. Viestikapulassa on sinun nimesi. And next to your name it has your mission in life on it. Ja myöskin se mikä on sun tehtävä elämässä. Have you picked up the button? Ootko sä oh! nostanut sen viestikapulaa? You know there's nothing nicer to meet somebody who's running for Jesus. On ihana tavata joku joka juoksee Jeesuksen kanssa. All over the world I meet all kinds of people. They are passionate because they have a baton. 
Joka puolella maailmaa tapaan ihmisiä, jotka on intohimoisia siitä, että he voi juosta sitä juoksua. The most miserable Christians are those with no bagana. Surullisimmat kristityt on ne, jotka ei juokseta viesti They don't kanssa. know what their mission in life is about. He ei tiedä, mikä tehtävä heillä on elämässä. They're just running all over the place. He juoksee vailla suuntaan. Pick up the baton. Nosta se kapula. And run for Jesus. Ja juokse Jeesukselle. The baton we said last night is light. Eli tämä viestikapula, niin kuin eilen todettiin, se on kevyt. God, Jesus says, my burden is light. Jeesus sanoo, mun taakkani on kevyt. It will not crush you. Se ei murskaa sinua. It will crush someone else if they take your baton. Se kyllä saattaa murskata jonkun toisen, jos he ottaa sinun kapulan itselleen. And you say, I will never be able to do what you do. Ja voi sanoa, mä en ikinä pysty tohon, mitä sinä teet. It's okay. God has given her a baton that he hasn't given to you. Mutta se on ihan ok, sillä hänellä on ihan oma kapulansa. Baton is your mission in life. Tämä viestikapula on se sun tehtävä, lähetystehtävä. If I, if I give you this baton, jos annan sulle tämän kapulan, or if we had a game, and I gave it to Pastor Chima, and I said, can you tell us what is your mission in life? If you say, well, give me one week to think about it. <laughs> you should know your mission in life anytime. So if I phone you at three o'clock in the morning, I say, what's your mission in life? You say, well, well, just give me two seconds. I say, two seconds is enough. And you will tell me what your mission is life is. Siihen kerrot, mikä on sun tehtävä elämässä. What is God's calling upon your life? Mitä Jumala kutsuu sua tekemään? What has God called you to do in this world? Mitä hän, hän haluaa, että teet tässä elämässä? Some people will say, I will know and will pass the baton to the next person. Jotkut sanoo, että en tiedä ja antaa äkkiä seuraavalle sen kapulan. The best thing you can do today. Ja paras asia, minkä voit tehdä tänään is to cry out to God when you go home. On, että kun lähdet kotiin, niin huuda Jumalan puoleen. And say, Lord, I have just one life. Sano Jumala, että mulla on vain yksi elämä. I don't want to waste the only life I have. En halua tuhlata sitä. There is not a spare button. Tää ei ole, ei ole mitään varakapuloita. There's only one. On vain yksi. And say, Lord, I want to know what is my mission in life. Sano Jumala, mä haluan tietää, mikä mun tehtävä on. There's nothing worse to arrive at the end of your life ei ole se kamalampaa, kun päästä elämän loppuun. And to realize your life has gone. Ja tajuta, että elämä on kulunut. You're dropping the button because you're going to heaven. Ja luovut siitä kapulasta, koska olet menossa taivaaseen. God will not say to you, oh, you missed your mission in life, I send you back to earth. <laughs> Jumala ei sano, että ah, sä et nyt täyttänyt sitä tehtävää, että tota, menpä takaisin. Reincarnation does not exist in the Bible. Uudelleen syntymistä ei mainita. We don't start over and over and over again. Me ei voida sillä tavalla aloittaa elämää alusta. One chance, one life, one battle. Yksi mahdollisuus, yksi elämä, yksi viesti kapula. The great uh, missionary from England to Africa, David Livingstone. David Livingstone, joka oli englantilainen suuri lähetystyöntekijä, joka meni Afrikkaan. He died in 1873. Are you listening? He died in 1873 in Zambia. He spent his life bringing healing to thousands of people in that part of Africa. When he died, there was a big funeral service. People came from everywhere. No one wanted to miss the funeral service of this great man of God. In the front of the church was the coffin of Dr. Livingstone. There was one man who was standing in front of the coffin and he was crying and crying and crying. There was a journalist, there was a journalist over here looking at the scene. So the journalist came very slowly and reverently to this man crying over the coffin of Dr. Livingstone. And the reporter said, can I have a question? 
Are you a member of the family of Dr. Livingston? Oletko tämän tohtori Livingstonen perheen jäsenkenties? And this man turned over to the journalist. Mies kääntyi toimittajan puoleen. With tears pouring out his eyes. Kitkiä aivan puolesta. And he says, no, I'm not a member of his family. Hän sanoi, en ole perheen jäsen. I'm not crying over his life. En itki hänen elämänsä takia. I'm crying over my life. Itken oman elämäni takia. He spent his life so well. Hän käytti omaa elämänsä niin hyvin. I've wasted mine. Ja minä olen tuhlannut oman. I pray that no one here will ever say I've wasted mine. Rukoilen ettei teistä kenenkään tarvitse sanoa samoin, että olette tuhlanneet elämäsi. Pick up the button and run to the finishing line. Ottakaa se viesti kapula ja lähtekää liikkeelle. I'm going to share with you what is a very personal uh, story. Ja teille todella henkilökohtaisen tarinan. I will never forget what happened on the first Saturday of April 2013. En ikinä unohda, mitä tapahtui ensimmäisenä lauantaina uh, huhtikuussa 2013. I had been running in Cambodia for many years. Olin juossut siellä Kambotsassa vuosikaudet. Running from one slum to another slum. Yhdestä slummista toiseen. Helping families who don't have any hope. Auttanut perheitä, joilla ei ole toivoa. Getting kids into school. Ja yritän saada lapsia kouluun. Encouraging kids to attend a local church nearby. Rohkaisu lapsia osallistumaan kirkkoon. Running, running. From one slum to another. And sometimes running around the world to tell people about the slum in Cambodia. And then I woke up on that Saturday morning and I knew something was different. As if all the plugs in my life had been pulled out of the socket. Ja kun kaikki mun elämän tavallaan sähköjohdot olisi otettu irti pistorasioista. I had all these people to meet during that day. It was impossible to meet anyone. Sinä päivänä oli sovittu paljon tapaamisia ihmisten kanssa, mutta tiesin, että en pysty tapaamaan heitä. I came out of the bedroom and I went to the bathroom. Menin kylpyhuoneeseen. And when I walked into the bathroom, when I walked into the bathroom, my whole world crumbled. Kun pääsin sinne kylpyhuoneeseen, tuntui, että koko elämä murenee. I didn't know where I was. En tiedä, missä olin. I didn't know what I was doing in Cambodia. Mitä tein oikein täällä Kambodsassa? Everything collapsed. Kaikki vaan tuntui sortuvan. About the same time I was to fly to Singapore. Samoihin aikoihin mun oli tarkoitus lentää Singaporeen. And I could see that it was a risk even to fly from Cambodia to Singapore. Tiesin, että olisi nyt... Aika riskiä lentää sieltä kampuksesta Singaporeen. Actually, I forgot to take the plane. Itse asiassa unohdin sen koko lennon. The team that was flying to this conference phoned me and said, Timote, where are you? Konferenssin lähdössä oleva tiimi soitti, että missä se oikein on. <coughs> I said, are we flying today? Kysyin, että näinkö se lento? We're not flying today, we're flying in two days time. Te teiks kahden päivän päästä lennon? Of course, they were right and I was wrong. He oli oikeassa ja mä olin väärä. So they flew to this conference. He menivät sinne konferenssiin. Two days later, I'm flying by myself because I really want to attend this conference. There's some great speakers in this conference. There's a great woman of God called Heidi Baker from Mozambique. When I got to the airport, when I landed at the airport in Singapore, I didn't know where I was. I thought I was in the shopping mall. I go to the customs with my passport. And I just walk in front of the custom officer with my passport. She says, hello, where are you going? You have to fill up a form. Where are you going? How many days are you in Singapore for? Of course, when I came back, I went to this table and I filled in the forms. I went back to the custom officer with the form but not with the passport. All my lights went off. When I walked into that conference room of about 4,000 people, ja kun astuin sinne konferenssisaliin, jossa oli noin 4000 ihmistä. Heidi Baker was on her knees 
praying. Heidi Baker oli kolmistunut rukoilemaan. And this is what she said. Ja tämä oli se, mitä hän sanoi. The Holy Spirit is telling you. Pyhä Henki sanoo sinulle. It's time for you to stop running. On aika lakata juoksemasta. The Holy Spirit says it again. It's time for you to stop running. Pyhä Henki sanoo uudelleen. On aika lopettaa juoksemasta. I said, I've been running all these years and I'm so exhausted. This is the word of God. A year later, I packed up my suitcases and I left Cambodia. I thought I would never come back to Cambodia. I flew to Switzerland. And for one year, I went to a Bible Institute and I studied and I rested there. Ja vuoden ajan opiskelin raamattua raamattukoulussa ja lepäsin. At the end of my time in Switzerland, there is a conference in Germany. Ja sitten kun mun aikani siellä Sveitsissä oli tulossa päätökseen, oli Saksassa tällainen konferenssi. Ten thousand young people in Stuttgart. Kymmenen tuhatta nuorta Stuttgartissa. I'm sitting next to Heidi Baker. Ja satun istumaan Heidi Bakerin vieressä. I said, Oh, she's the one who two years ago said stop running. So I came close to her and I said, do you remember me? She says, yeah, you were the one very tired in Cambodia. <laughs> she took my hand and she started praying for me. When Heidi Baker prays for you, don't go anywhere. <laughs> She says, Timothy, I can see you running. I said, that's interesting because she can't remember. I walked in when she said, stop running. She says, I can see you running in Cambodia. And if you look behind, there's hundreds of people running. I knew my time was to go back to Cambodia. Actually, I had in my little room in this Bible Institute a few items of Cambodia. I had the Cambodian Bible. I had the Cambodian scarf. I had a little box that the King of Cambodia gave me once. And I had the map of Cambodia. The map is on the shelf. I've given up on Cambodia. I'm not going back there. But the map is telling me maybe you could open me for a minute. I had left Cambodia one year and a half ago. I opened the map. In front of me is the lake of Geneva. Ja Geneve järvi levittäytyi siellä Sveitsissä edessä. The French Alps covered with snow. Ja ranskalaiset alpit lumi huittuineen. But then slowly my mind went all the way to Cambodia. Mutta mun mieli alkoi palata sinne Kampotsaan. And on one side I see the whole country of Cambodia. Toisella puolella karttaa näin koko Kampotsan maan. I see the Mekong River in blue. Näin sinisellä Mekong joen. And then I turn and I see the map of the city of Phnom Penh. And then I cried for the first time. God started to stir my heart again for that nation. And I cried and I cried over this map. And I knew it was time for me to put my shoes on and to start running again. You know, I could have stayed in the locker room for the rest of my life. When you have a game, you have a first half, locker room, second half. It was nice in the locker room of Switzerland. So comfortable. I made some new friends. I had a pastor friend who would see me every week. Life was so comfortable in the locker room of Switzerland. But I realized it was time to get my suitcases ready. Put my running shoes again. 
and get out of the locker room. You know, in a stadium of God, you have those who run, and then you have those in the locker room. And it's okay for a time to be in the locker room. A time to rest. A time to hear God's voice. A time to prepare yourself for the second half. But the danger is to stay in the locker room. You know, I have visited a number of locker rooms in churches. You meet all kinds of people who used to run for Jesus, they don't run anymore. You have, for example, the nostalgic group. So they say, come and sit with us. We've been here a long, long time. Today. In 1964. <laughs> Those were the days of revival. <laughs> we saw the power of God. People were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now it's all entertainment in the church. <laughs> and then you meet another one of the group. They say, I used to preach the gospel in the streets of Helsinki every Saturday night. <laughs> I used to give gospel tracts every week. Ah, those were the days. It's not the same anymore. And they opened this old photo album. It's all rusty. <laughs> you can hardly see the people on the picture. They say, you see this? Preaching? That's me. <laughs> 1971. Uh, those were the days, brothers. You find those nostalgic in every church in the world. Maybe here today. And then if you walk in the locker room, you'll find another group. The untouchable. They're sitting in the corner of the locker room. Don't get too close to them. They have done so many mistakes in their life, don't touch them. And they say, hey, Pastor Shima, don't get close to me. Three years ago, I messed it up. I have messed it up so bad, never God will ever use me again. Don't touch me. So like a colony of lepers, they stay together. And then sometimes they say, so what did you do? <laughs> like prisoners who say, no, why are you here for? <laughs> oh, I sinned big time. Mm, the grace of God will never flow over there. There's no second chance for us. No third and tenth chance. We will stay in that locker room for the rest of our lives. And then you have, in the locker room, you have a, a group that I call we cannot do anything group. <laughs> they spend their time reading biographies of great men and women of God. Wow, Heidi Baker raising dead people in Mozambique. Reinhard Bonke preaching to one million people in Nigeria. Ooh, I will never do anything for God. God will never choose me. I can never do anything great for God. Impossible. And they stay impossible in their mind in the locker room of the stadium. God wants to come into the locker rooms of your life today. And say, what are you doing in there? How many more years do you want to stay in the locker room? 
Jesus died so every locker room gets empty. Jesus kuoli, jotta jokainen pukuhuone voisi tyhjentyä, ihmiset voisi lähteä sieltä eteenpäin. Every locker room in this room today can be open. Jokainen pukuhuone, joka on täällä tänään, voi tyhjentyä. You've been inside that locker room for too long. Olet ollut ehkä liian kauan siellä. You're waiting to be perfect and completely healed. Odotat, että olet täysin parantunut. When I went back to Cambodia two years ago, kun menin takaisin Kambodjaan, I was 70% healed. Olin ehkä 70% parantunut. 70 was enough. Mutta se, 70 prosenttia, se oli I could have waited my whole life for the 100%. Olisin voinut odottaa koko elämän, että on 100% tehty. No one is 100%. Mutta ei kukaan ole. Only Jesus. Vaan Jesus. So I walked out of the locker room. Joten mä lähdin sieltä pukuun. And I packed my two suitcases. Pakkasin kaksi matkalaukkua. I bought a one-way ticket. Ostin taas <laughs> merolipun. And in November 2015, I landed again in Cambodia. Ja 2015 syksyllä taas olin Kambodsassa. Do you remember those two lepers uh, or those two blind men in the Bible? Muistatko, kun Raamattu puhuu kahdesta sokeasta? I just want to quickly read with you Matthew chapter 20. Matteusen evankeliumi luku 20. I know my time is up, but just give me a few more minutes. Matthew 20. Matteus 20. Verse 29. Yeah, it's okay if I just read it myself. Mm -hmm. So just follow 29 to 34. 29 of chapter 20. As Jesus and the disciples left the town of Jericho, a large crowd followed behind. Two blind men were sitting beside the road. When they heard that Jesus was coming that way, they began shouting, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Be quiet, the crowd yelled at them. But they only shouted louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. When Jesus heard them, he stopped and called, What do you want me to do for you? 33. Lord, they said, we want to see. Jesus felt sorry for them and touched their eyes. Instantly they could see, then they followed him. Amen. Amen. The two men are on the roadside. And they hear an exciting crowd. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And they know Jesus is the healer. The crowd is trying to stop them from calling to Jesus. When I read this, I said, the crowd following Jesus is stopping two blind men to follow Jesus too. Sometimes those who will slow you down are inside the church. They are following Jesus, they don't want you to follow Jesus. So the two blind men cried out, Jesus! And Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? And Jesus gave them signs together. And it says, and they followed him. In other words, they started to run the race. Their eyes fixed on Jesus. Don't let anyone keep you on the sideline. Don't let anyone keep you in the locker room. Even good followers of Jesus. Respond to the call and say, I'm going to follow Jesus with all my heart. I read this uh, story the other day. It happened in 1930. 1930 on New Year's Day. 1st of January. There was this final of an American football game. Once in America, I followed the American uh, Super Bowl. There was a guy from Scotland on my right. And there was a guy from Poland on my left. 
None of them knew the rules of American football. <laughs> so I still don't know how to play the game. But I know in America it's a big thing. And on that final in 1930, two of the best teams in America were facing each other. There was a man by the name of Regals. He picked the ball. Hän otti tämän pallon siellä kentällä. And he started to run. Ja alkoi juosta. And he was running and very little opposition. Ja hän juoksi ja nousi, ei kovinkaan paljon vastustajia. He was vastaan. running, but in the wrong direction. Hän juoksi väärään suuntaan. So the whole stadium is like, what in the world is going on? Koko stadionin väki ihmettelee, mitä oikein tapahtuu. One of his uh, fellow uh, uh, team member Eräs kaveri hänen. ran behind Riggel, tackled him, <laughs> and the ball went up in the air. <laughs> and then the opposite team caught the ball, pallon, and they scored mm-hmm. just before the halftime break. Juuri ennen kuin erä the two teams left the pitch. And Riggle walked into the locker room and crying like a baby. Ashamed to look at the other team members. At the end of the break, the coach, Mr. Price, he announced the same man who played the first half of the game will play the second half of the game. Everyone in the team left for the second half. Everybody except one player. And Rego looked at Mr. Price. Tears on his face. He says, Coach, I cannot get out of the locker room. I cannot face the crowd. En pysty kohtaamaan tätä yleisöä. What I did a few minutes ago was so stupid of me. Mitä tein äsken oli niin typerää. And the coach came and he put his hand on the shoulder of Riggle. Ja valmentaja tuli ja laittoi kätensä tämän Riggleen olalle. He says, Riggle, you go out. Sanoi, että Riggle, nyt lähdepä kentälle. The game is not over yet. Peli ei ole vielä ohi. The game is not over over yet. And he walked out of the locker room. And as he walked out, his shoulders became stronger. He didn't care what the crowd had to think. What was important is what the coach said. What is important is what Jesus says to you. The crowd might be upset with you. Yleisö, se ihmisjoukko voi olla teille suhtunut. Listen to the voice of Jesus. Mutta kuunnelkaa Jeesusta. And it says, never in the history of American football. Ja sanotaan, että Ameri- koko amerikkalaisen alkaa historiassa. They saw a player play as powerfully and passionately as Riggle did in that final in 1930. Kukaan pelaaja pelaa niin intohimoisesti ja niin hyvin kuin tämä mies siinä ottelussa. Tonight I want to invite you to come out of the locker room. Tänä iltana mä haluan kutsua sua lähtemään heidät puhukopista. Pick up the baton again. Ottamaan taas viestikapula käteen. And one for Jesus. Ja juoksemaan Jeesukselle. A crowd of witnesses. Todistajien tiivi. I'm going to land my message now, like a plane. <laughs> Nyt vielä <laughs> yksi kertaa lentää. And I will close with the same verse we opened yesterday night. Aloitan samalla jakeella, tai lopetan samalla jakeella, jolla aloitetaan. It says, looking around, there is a crowd of witnesses. Now, can you look around? Look around the stadium. Can you see the crowd of witnesses? Can you see Moses over there? <laughs> He's holding his stick and he says, you can do it. Hän heiluttaa sauvaa ja sanoo, sä pystyt siihen. Look, can you see Joshua and Caleb over there? Joshua ja Caleb. They're standing together. They open the way to the promised land. They're yelling from the stand, you can do it! Can you see Esther? She saved her people. She was not afraid to face the king. 
Can you see in the distance the little slave girl? We don't even know her name. She said to the wife of Naaman, if you go to my country, there is a prophet who can ask the God Almighty to heal your husband. She's here in the crowd, she's waiting. Can you see Timothy, Titus, Philemon? Can you see Paul? Paul who said to the Philippians, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. Can you see Martin Luther? Can you see John Wesley? Can you see John Wesley? John Wesley? Can you see Corrie ten Boom? She, in the Second World War, protected the Jews in Holland. Her sister died in a concentration camp. Can you see the two sisters waving? They're encouraging you. Whatever suffering you go through, they've been through it. Can you see my grandma? <laughs> From England? <laughs> She's gone already. My granddad is gone. Both granddad, both, both grandmas. Gone. But they're waving at us tonight. You can do it. I can see an evangelist from Finland who changed my life when I was 17 years old. I think his name was Kevin Martinen. They called him the Billy Graham of Finland. <laughs> he worked for Youth for Christ here. And when he preached in Belgium in 1990, I was in this big OM conference. I was only 17 years old. And he spoke exactly the word my heart was longing for. I heard yesterday that he's gone already. He's not running anymore. But he's encouraging those who are running. He's encouraging you today. So I want to invite you right now to come out of the locker room and say, God, I want to run. I want to run for the first time or I want to run again. My eyes fixed on Jesus. Let's just, let us pray together.